Okay, I'm ready to uh, radius this fretboard. And we've got it in the jig I use. I've gone handheld here so I can show you close up. So you can see I've just got a sawhorse. And I, actually it's a drum stool, an old drum stool of mine. And the jig that's clamped the, to the uh, sawhorse is just simply two blocks that are the same width as these uh, radius blocks. So you can see this is a 12 inch radius, just a slight radius there. And I use the self-adhesive uh, sandpaper on that. Since this fretboard doesn't have any fret markers, which are usually my, my gauge for when I've gotten the whole fretboard radius, is I use a um, contrasting colored pencil. Since this is a, if you will, a darker board, I just use white. If it was a rosewood, I'd do the same thing. If it was a maple board, I would just use a regular pencil. And at the headstock end, I've got a, if you can see it there, there's a wedge under and a wedge over to give me a, a support the headstock and give me a level way to put that clamp on. So you can see this fits right in there and will slide between the two. So I can get past the nut area and in the back down here, it can get all the way through. Holding it in at this end, get right down in there. If you can see them, there's two wedges that both center and hold the back heel end of the, of the neck in place. The other thing before I start, I make sure to adjust the truss rod so that the, the fretboard is perfectly level to begin with, that there isn't a, you know, a bow in either direction before I even try to level it. Okay, quick progress check here. You see most of the marks are gone and I've deliberately swapped over. This is actually P120 paper, but it's because it's red, you can really see. You can see though how the, the sawdust is pretty even across. So that tells me I'm just about there. So what I can do is I'm gonna use chalk so you can really see it. And I'm just gonna go like this up the fretboard. Yes, what I want to be able to do is just do a couple of passes or a few passes with this 120 and that'll let me see if there's any low spots. Obviously, since I'm, you know, you're putting a curve in, the outside edges are, are getting the most work in and the center is getting, gets touched last. So sometimes you see just that last little bit in the center that's got to be taken down. And then I just have to go through successive grits. Um, I'm going to do 220, 320, 400, 600, and 800. Those grits, though, I'll only have to do maybe 10 to 20 passes. I don't have to do a ton of work. It's just to keep refining getting it as smooth as I can. Another hint for that is when I'm working, I've got one hand kind of guiding it, one hand pushing it, is I literally counting in my head. And I'll do, say, 25 or 30 passes. And I turn the block around and then I push it the other, with my other hands. That avoids any bias that I may be putting in because of being right-handed or left-handed or unevenness on the grit of the sandpaper. It gives me the absolutely most even, smoothest surface. And we'll see how close we are. Okay, so looking at that, there's just a faintest little bit here and right at the very uh, heel, which is often true because it's wider there. It takes, there's more wood literally to take away than there is at the nut end. So I only have to do a few more passes with this and then I can, I can swap over um, and just do my refining. Okay, I'm ready for my just last handful of passes here with uh, some P800 grit sandpaper. And you see, I've, so you can see it, I've just done a few frets, I've just chalked them. That should only take a handful of passes for that to disappear evenly. That'll give me a very smooth 
fretboard surface perfectly radius and ready for frets. One of the reasons I'm going to 800 with this fretboard is there's going to be no finish other than some fretboard oil. The feel of it now is going to be the feel of it when I'm done, so I want it nice and smooth. The other thing I'll do is when I'm done, you can probably even see it a little bit, but there's a lot of this really fine sawdust that's, that hasn't been vacuumed up. I will save that for after I put the frets in and I'll show you how I fill the fret ends so that they are almost invisible. But let me just do the full few passes on this so you can see how that just disappears so quickly. Okay, that was 10 back and forth. And I got one little tiny spot there and one here. And part of it is I'm doing this from a weird angle. And again, the point here is not to push down, is to let the, the sandpaper do, do the work. Yeah, that's all I needed to do. That's, again, so that's where position and doing this is so important. So that I'm just guiding this straight along letting the sandpaper do its work and not pushing down or I'll start to create a dip in the in the fretboard. All right, so all I have to do is clean this up, get the sawdust out of the fret slots. I got the, the fretboard radiused and a couple things I have to do to prep before I can install frets. One is use this little tool. So it's basically like a really thin hook razor blade make sure I've got the fret slots clean. I'm going to use a triangular file to run a few passes. That kind of, that chamfers, meaning it, it kind of creates almost a V-shape at the very top um, so that the frets fully seat. I've double checked. I have a set of gauges to make sure that this actually was 12 inches and it is. I also have a gauge Another little handy one that I know as long as those lines are not visible, I've got plenty of space for the frets. If they were visible, I can even hand deep in the slot if I needed to, but these are fine. Um, and the reason I put it down here is that the, the last frets on the outside is going to have the most wood taken away. It's never an issue up here. Um, these are always going to be the deepest after you've radiced it. I also have my little bag here of, that I saved the sawdust because after the turn this on its side. After the frets go in, the little lines here, I will fill this in with CA, fill them in with CA glue and this matching of ankle sawdust. And then I can take a little nap, which I'll do now just to show you visually. This also helps in case there was any contaminants in the sandpaper, it shouldn't be. I'm really kind of lathering it on there. That's what the fretboard will look like in the end.